This week, I made a table for our living room that hides behind the couch. It's time for a make or break. Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Rob. This week my wife asked me to make a narrow table that would live behind our couch and give us a place to sit and eat or use a laptop or whatever while we watch TV. This idea I liked. Here's how it turned out. In our living room, we have a sectional couch at an angle facing our TV in the corner. And my wife asked me to make her a table that would line the back of the couch and give us a place to sit and watch TV while working or eating. She gave me a few photos for inspiration and I headed down to the shop. I knew the top would be 14 inch deep, so I figured I could take two 1x8s and just glue them together. Easy, right? Well, the two pieces I got were naturally warped, and I remembered a Wood Whisperer article I read recently talking about fighting warp by alternating your grain, so I decided to rip each piece in half, flip them around, and glue them back together to help keep it all flat. You can see how warped they are right here. But sure enough, I glued them together and clamped them up. It would have been nice to have a biscuit joiner here to help them stay aligned, but the clamps did a good job. I didn't have enough clamps to glue them all at the same time, so after the first pair was done, I did the next. While those were drying, I started on the frame. The whole thing was going to be made out of 2x2s, two and I used a miter saw to cut all of my pieces. Next, I put pocket holes where I knew you wouldn't see them. Now I stopped to glue my full tabletop together, and then moved on to assembling the frame. I started to glue and screw the pieces together only to realize my pocket holes and the end pieces were so close that I couldn't get the drill into each one. Fortunately, I had this heart right angle impact adapter which I'd never used before. It worked perfectly. Super easy to get into those tight spots. Next I went back to the tabletop, which was finally dry, and sanded it with 80, 150, and finally 220 grit sandpaper. Then I used my circular saw to cut off the ends. I went back to the frame and finished gluing and screwing it all together. I moved it out of my way so I could use the table saw to rip a 2x4 into two 1x1 strips. I'll be using these for the guardrail that should help keep drinks from sliding off onto the couch. I cut the 1x1s into all the pieces that I needed for the rail. Now that I had my frame and rail pieces, I decided it was a good time to paint. Both of those would be black, while the top will be a natural pine that my wife has now made a major feature of our living room. After that dried, I placed the tabletop upside down on the bench and set the frame in place. This made it easy to screw the frame directly onto the top. I flipped the whole thing right side up and set it on the floor. I used my trim router to round over the front edge just to make it more comfortable. Then it was time to finish the top. I used lacquer again like I did on our bourbon barrel table. About halfway through, my lungs reminded me to put a respirator on. While the table dried, I turned to my railing parts, which I simply glued in place. Now I know this table will be used with phones, laptops, tablets, that kind of stuff, and people are going to be asking for outlets, so I decided to add one to the table. I found this great recessed dual outlet with three USB charging ports on Amazon for like 16 bucks. To build it in, I had to measure out a hole, and then use my drill and jigsaw to cut it out. The initial fit was a little bit tight, so I used my trim router to clean out a bit more until it fit perfectly. Then I just screwed it into the table, and that was that. Finally, I carefully clamped my railing in place, then pre-drilled and screwed it to the top from the underside. This took a little bit of patience, but it worked just great. And with that, I was done. This turned out so nice, it immediately became the favorite place to sit in the living room. Now it's easier for the kids to have a snack without getting food on the couch, and I can more easily hang out with the family while I'm catching up on the emails. The outlets and USB charging ports work really great, and most importantly, my wife's happy, so I'm happy. I'll tell you what, when you walk through our living room, I can now point out at least six different projects that I've completed myself, which is insanely gratifying. If you've got some extra time this weekend, go make something you're gonna use every day. All right, it's time to meet a maker, and this week we're joined by Brandon and Sarah from Living in Advance, who built their own home in the back of a van. Hey Rob and Sarah, we are Brandon and Sarah. Uh, we currently live in Augusta, Georgia. We're um, full-time living in a 2019 Ram Pro Master, um, and we've been living in it for a year this month. Yeah. Um, we chose van life because we just love traveling. We decided to invest in, you know, build something that's, that's ours, that yeah. um, we can invest in and kind of build it the way we want it, yeah. you know, around our lifestyle. And so we've been um, living in it while building it. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a little bit of struggle, but I mean, we're getting things done and <laughs> yeah. we're, we're almost done. We got yeah. a few more months and it'll be final. My favorite tool is probably your safety glasses because what? it <laughs> what? keeps you safe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
So uh, the real answer, <laughs> I would have to say uh, table saw. Table saw. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's that's number one. Table <laughs> solve all your problems. Table <laughs> solve all your problems. I didn't get one because they're expensive and. You uh, got this one as a hot deal. Yeah, I got it off Facebook Market. It was it's like 20 years old, but it was brand new in the box. Mm -hmm. and I bought it for like 100 bucks. I'm telling you guys, Facebook Market yeah. is your like saving yeah. grace for everything. Yeah, it it's really helped out tremendously and anyone that's plan planning to do a build um invest in one 100 percent uh even if it's pricey up front it'll make yeah. every job easier mm -hmm. i don't know i keep going back to the the uh, display like yeah. the open face shelf above our dining table area it allowed me to express myself and be able to decorate the van and make it right. feel like home my favorite project uh, surprisingly is the plumbing um, it was a task that I was kind of avoiding because it seemed complicated and you know I'm not a plumber it was it was really fun just being able to connect all the, the hoses the pipes and um, it just felt like you're putting together like Legos the outcome was rewarding you know having a sink having running water oh, is just... you're right. that, that's like a really good one I'm yeah. not gonna change my answer but if I had to pick a different one, it'd be the sink because yeah. you can do everything. Yeah. McDunko, M-C-D-U-N-C-O. He was also building out a Ram Pro Master um, van. We just kind of connected, um, exchanging messages back and forth, um, just helping each other out, providing tips and yeah, you know, was tricks super and nice. stuff. And his, his van's awesome and he's completely yeah. done. I'm kind of jealous. Uh, stove slash oven. In our kitchen with the propane yeah so we all gotta that get up. plumb the propane lines and all that jazz and it's kind of nerve-wracking but we haven't had been able to use an oven for a really long time and we love mm. uh, roasted veggies and um, just baking stuff and we've been without that for a year now and roasted veggies is literally yeah. my favorite so we're excited for the oven me. part and while while we're doing all this we're also planning a wedding oh my <laughs> word recently engaged and so just throwing another wrench in there yeah um, but yeah uh, we're doing our best yeah i'm just glad we're on our work. final stretch because it's yeah. like i feel like when it actually is going to get really crazy i think that's all we have um, yeah. thank you for having us bye guys bye if you guys are not already subscribed to living in advance you can find them at living in advanced on instagram now before I go, I wanted to share a couple of our favorite maker videos of the week. First up, we've been following and featuring Michael Alm for a while now. His use of plywood patterns is absolutely amazing, and this week he used the feature again on these beautiful light fixtures. And Drew over at Fisher Shop taught us an awesome bandsaw technique that makes it easy to create a complex collage of various wood species into this beautiful Lazy Susan. All right, Sarah will be back next week, and that can't happen soon enough. Last week, I made this weirdly bird-like headphone stand, which you can watch right here. Special thanks to Hart for sponsoring this episode and reminding us that we can build anything we can imagine if we do it with Hart. All right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Break's over. Go make something. <laughs>